Is it too cliche to call it a pain in the butt for runners? Yeah, probably. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you five exercises we almost always give to runners who present with cases of high hamstring tendinopathy. First, we need to understand the nature of the injury itself. The clue's in the title here. So high up at the top end of the hamstring muscles, we find their, con their common origin, where their tendon inserts into the ischial tuberosity of the pelvis. That's the bony part towards the bottom of your butt cheek. Being a tendinopathy, we know that it's this conjoined tendon that's currently in disrepair. This is very much one of your typical overuse type running injuries. And in my experience, it comes as a result of chronic overload of the hamstring tendons, usually with a more acute trigger. What do I mean by overload? Well, if there's one thing that tendons don't particularly enjoy, it's the combination of being compressed while under hard, high tensile loads. They're great at dealing with tension when in an optimal position, but when you add compression to the tendon, it's a simple trigger for problems. Now, because of the specific way in which the tendon attaches to the rear part of the ischial tuberosity, near your butt crease, loading the hamstrings in increased amount of hip flexion as we start to increase knee extension in particular really starts to compress that tendon under load. So what sorts of exercises are we talking about here? Well anything that's going to put you in a position where you're lengthening your stride out, so particularly speed work and hill work, begins to become an aggravating factor particularly in runners who are trying to train through cases of high hamstring tendinopathy. Now when it comes to rehabbing the injury, it's important we take this understanding of the anatomy in particular into account. As with most tendinopathies, we need to load the hamstring tendons to stimulate the healing and repair, and also to build the strength in the hamstring muscles themselves. Muscular weakness is definitely a risk factor when it comes to tendon problems, don't forget. We need to ensure, however, that we don't load the hamstrings and their tendons in such a way that creates this combination of compression and tension. In other words, while initially rehabbing the injury, we need to look for exercises that avoid loading too much into hip flexion. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can find the free high hamstring tendinopathy download on the Kinetic Revolution website, containing more information on this frustrating injury and video demonstrations for some ideal rehab exercises. To begin with, we focus on isometric exercises, such as a simple double leg bridging exercise to help engage the glutes and hamstrings and load the hamstring origin tendon without flexing, flexing the hip. Try to vary positions of this exercise. You start with your heels close to your butt, which becomes a bit more of a glute focused exercise. Conversely, if you set up with your heels further away, creating a longer lever from the hip, you'll be placing more of an emphasis on hamstring loading. You can build up to this. Aim for 10 sets of 10 seconds holding this bridge position. A simple progression to this is to incorporate a single leg bridge into this isometric hold. The single leg bridge, most runners find a hell of a lot tougher than a usual double leg bridge. Again, you can try this for 10 sets of 10 seconds. When these become easier, you can progress to working the hamstring through range of motion at the knee. To begin with, we can use the unloaded exercises such as hamstring curls or adding the other leg into a prone hamstring curl to add resistance to make it more of an eccentric exercise. You can aim for, for three sets of 20 on each leg maintaining core control, so don't allow your back to arch excessively as you do so. We can then add more complex activities like Swiss ball hamstring curls, single leg Swiss ball hamstring curls, and loading gently into flexion. Again, this hip flexion isn't so bad because we're doing hip flexion and knee flexion at the same time. It's the combination of hip flexion and knee extension that particularly those hamstring tendons won't like. Again, aim for three sets of 20 for these exercises. Of course, there are other factors to take into account when it comes to rehabbing high hamstring tendinopathy such as dynamic control of the pelvis and running technique. I'll leave links in the description to other videos you might find helpful on these topics. Don't forget to head on over to the Kinetic Revolution website to download your free high hamstring tendinopathy rehab guide. Best of luck with this and I'll speak to you soon. Bye now.